Good evening, I'm Mark Kelly. Sometimes we come across people so compelling, their stories so powerful that it's best they tell it all in their own words. That's what happened when we began looking into a law in Nova Scotia that allows parents to declare their adult children mentally incompetent and get guardianship over them. That's brought a lot of pain and conflict to so many families, as you'll see in their stories. It's a whole different world that other people don't have to imagine because they don't live in our shoes. It's not an easy task. You don't wake up in the morning and think you'll ever have a special needs child. Growing up, I didn't have a huge behavioral issue. I just wanted to be accepted. And I didn't want it to be treated as an outcast. I'm Brenda Webb, and I have four sons, and one of my sons is Landon. Landon, as a baby, um, was a very beautiful child. I think pretty well in the newborn period, we knew something was wrong with Landon. Just holding his head up for not meeting his milestones. We had diagnoses like a heart murmur, then that led to his open heart surgery. From there, it was um, developmental delay that was global, behavior issues. Then, as he got older, he developed the seizures. I just always told him he could do whatever he wanted to do, and we would just support him. He could fly. He could fly as high as he wanted to, and just like eagles fly. My name is Landon Webb, and I'm 25 years old, and my Mother's name is Brenda Webb. I was very much active when I was a kid. Me and my brothers, we'd always be out there playing and building things or jumping off the, the rooftops when there was snow. He loved to play, running through the property, doing things with his brothers. I remember him always having a happy childhood. I remember one day when I was waiting for my father to come back from work and uh, he had these two bicycles and they were the most crappiest bikes but I loved them. I remember him taking them off the truck and I drove them up the driveway and drove them back and I was, that was a really good childhood memory for me. That was a, that was a really good one. When you send your child off to school the first time, you're putting your child in somebody else's hands. But with Landon, we had a little bit more concern because we knew he had some issues and problems. I remember that I went to go down to the bus stop with my mother. It was a special needs bus. And I didn't want to get on this small bus. I wanted to be like everyone else, get on a normal bus. Landon struggled with schoolwork, holding his pencil and being able to do penmanship. He just threw himself on the floor, come in the way of tantrums. People couldn't understand that, thinking that that required discipline rather than recognizing it as part of his disabilities and disorders. I was mainly struggling with the math and the, the reading at that time and the writing. Everything else, I felt it was really good. He liked some of his teachers. He didn't have a lot of friends, no. It always is a struggle for parents and for a mom to watch a child work so hard to have to obtain anything. They were requested by my mother to have a full-time aide in school and, and out on the playground, which I really didn't want because it would make me feel even more of an outcast and harder for me to make friends. My whole life I felt like an outcast and I wasn't really having that much of a relationship with my friends at school. So 
my dog and my pony were really my best friends. So, and then especially when I got pulled out of school in grade two, that's pretty much like they were my friends. We took Landon out of school um, at the direction of two psychiatrists. We did a lot of reading. We took him to the library. We did maths and we did workbook activities. He was still wonderful, yeah. She would only teach me my times tables with cue cards. She would read with me. Other than that, there wouldn't be much. I really became really good at pool too because I would go down and play pool in the basement. I would play pool for like two hours a day. A person like Landon who says things that are inaccurate or not uh, a fact, it might be just how he perceives them to be. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're true, or some of it could be his memory loss and the way he's remembering certain parts of his childhood. She was always saying that I always had these deficits and always saying that I had a handicap. She would always put it as a handicap, which made me kind of upset about myself. So it came to the point where they would never let me out and just go to the movies with people or do anything. So I came up with my own solution where I'd wait until they go to bed at night and wait till around one o'clock and I'd get a cab in the town and sneak out my window. I was grasping that, I would say, friendship and grasping to be able to go out and explore and be able to get something that I never got. My name is Tiffany. I've been with Landon since I was 16. Uh, he was 19, and uh, we met at a party. And after that, um, we talked on Facebook, and we went to the movies, and we just started being with each other every day. When I first met him, I didn't really bring him around my friends because um, he'd say stuff that was out of place. Like, it just he just really never had people skills when he lived home because he was in his bubble his whole life. Like, he had to learn, like, to talk to people, like to how hold a conversation with people and stuff like that. I love being with my girlfriend and I love going to the movies. I'm good at uh, listening to people, what they have to say. And when I go camping, I'm really good at starting a fire. <laughs> When he was in the valley, we went to a campground there. We got food and cooked on the fire, and um, he did it all pretty much because he loves doing it. Uh, we listened to music, uh, we laid and just watched the stars and all that stuff. Like, it, it was really fun. Landon basically um, had said that he was older and he wanted one day to live out on his own. And we said, one day, yes, perhaps, but not at the particular time he was asking. I was able to apply for social assistance. So that was like a big, huge change to me, just living out on my own. I learned how to put clothes in the washer and then in the dryer. I learned that you can't put whites with black. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I learned how to make my own bed. I never made a bed until I was 18 years old. He just decided that he thought he could be like everyone else and just go live on his own. And that wasn't feasibly possible for him. He didn't have the skills. He wasn't ready. I got scored the intellectual level of a 69. Mental retardation. 
and I hate that word. <laughs> of all the assessments I got, it was all on my intellectual level of my IQ. There were no assessments done on my, of what I can do from day to day, from getting up in the morning, from preparing his uh, breakfast, to uh, making his bed, or taking his medication. He was contacting us periodically. Uh, we were often going to the streets at night, making sure that he was safe. Oftentimes, we didn't know if he was taking his medication. We were seeing marks on him, bruises, scratches, and at points in times, we didn't even see cigarette burns on him. The bruises, they were from at times when I used to fool around with my friends and there was one time when I was out with my buddy and I was drinking a lot and I fell down and kind of roughed myself up some. And uh, cigarette burns, they're for myself actually, I inflicted cigarette burns on myself. So. How come? It sounds very painful. Why did you do it? Just. Other people were doing it, so I did it. And, yeah. One day, it was 11 o'clock at night, the police showed up and his parents, and they came to the door and we weren't going to answer the door because we were scared that they were going to try to take him. Landon went and they said, you're coming home with us. And Landon's like, no, I'm not. So I'm staying here with Tiffany. They rustled me to the floor and then to the bed. And then my father's helping them, trying to contain me. And then I remember one of the officers holding me up like a half a foot off, off the floor by a neck, eventually cuffed me. And they left and they took him and she was screaming outside, this is to help you land in and she put him in the back of the cop car. A New Glasgow family is making a tearful plea. 25-year-old Landon Webb was last seen 13 They've days ago. They've done everything they can to help find their son. We don't know if he's alive or dead. It's been a tough and emotional struggle between Brenda Webb and her son Landon. His rights, her responsibilities. In Nova Scotia, parents can get guardianship over their intellectually disabled adult children under the Incompetent Persons Act. Landon's parents get guardianship over him in 2010. Maybe she does have good little meanings about what she does, but she's actually hurting me. She's gotta let me expand and let my wings fly. She's, uh, she's smothering me. We didn't have any options. Um, the only option that was really available was the guardianship. You fought all your life to give him as much rights and to have him be like everybody else as much as he can be it was quite saddening and heart-wrenching for us. I got served papers for the guardianship order. And then I was like, oh gee, what's this about? I, I remember going on the bus, I remember crying, I remember thinking, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? I was more in shock than anything, really. My motivation was destroyed. I was restricted in all areas. I just thought it was all crazy because I didn't understand how so many kids just take somebody's rights away like that. Like it's just, it just, I didn't understand it. I was really felt hopeless and felt really stressed out and depressed. I just needed to drink to just to. Uh, try to cope, <laughs> so I drank and I drank and I was drunk for weeks at a time. We just never knew if we were gonna find Landon in a ditch, 
somebody had beaten him up or if we were going to get that knock and call that the parents dread. It was suggested by his psychiatrist. It was a sigh of relief and we thought it was on to bigger and better things for Landon and he would finally get the help that he needed. I've never been in a facility before in my life. This is horrible. This is horrible. Yeah. It's just hollering and screaming and banging and fighting. And then you got all kinds of different types of people that have their own different disability. Everyone else had more severe deficits than I did. The only way I was coping was eventually starting to AWOL from the facility, just to distract myself what was all really going on. I said to myself, well, they'll never think that I go west, and I took the Greyhound all the way out. A New Glasgow family is making a tearful plea tonight for any help to find their missing son. 25-year-old Landon Webb was last seen 13 days they ago when he left heard anything the King's from Landon region. Webb. They've done everything they can to help find their son. We don't know if he's alive or dead. <laughs> We're really worried about him. I want you to call home for her. Call on your brothers. I'm Michelle Ben, I'm 28 years old, and I live in Dartmouth. No one deserves to be locked up and treated like crap where you live. You deserve to be in a home. My name is Brenda Hardyman, I'm Michelle Ben's mother. I didn't want to go through the process of getting guardianship and making decisions for Michelle because I felt that she would be open to assisted uh, decision-making. She always seeks my advice on, on matters. She was a chubby little baby, very good-natured uh, and a pretty baby. She was born with the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck, so it uh, cut off her supply of oxygen and uh, caused uh, cerebral palsy. And uh, she has an organic brain disorder that causes uh, periodic episodes of uh, aggressive behavior. We lived right on the water. There is a beach and in the summer and stuff. I like to go swimming. My parents told me that I'm a fish underwater. They were very good with her, I found, in school. They, uh, they worked with her and gave her the confidence. Um, she always loved to read. All through school, from grade primary to grade 12, I got made fun of. So that was hard. No one wanted to hang out with me because I had a disability. They made fun of me because I was limping. My hand wouldn't work. Like, all my left side is better than my right side. It's longer, it's bigger. We had to arrange a tour for Nichelle before she moved in. And there's this older gentleman, and he didn't have any clothing on. And he's pulling himself across the floor. Where's the dignity for this man that's sitting on the floor with no clothing on? Why isn't somebody doing something about that? I lived there for a year and a half. Nightmare from heck. It was very disgusting. When somebody was acting up, um, they press this alert button and the security came and they either dragged or they picked up the person and pretty much thrown that person in a room and locked them in it. 
That happened to me a couple times, but they just put me in there, locked. Sometimes I even had my cell phone and I called 911. They just left me there. They, they can leave people in there for hours. We had written everybody we could think of, everybody. Everybody knew. We wanted her in a small options home under the care of her care providers. Instead, she was stuffed into an institutional hellhole. When you hear of somebody being charged with assault and assault with a weapon, you think of a gun, a knife. That's where my mind goes. Not a foam letter and a shoe, and not from somebody that's supposed to be caring for somebody in an institutional environment. All I could see was another scenario of Ashley Smith unfolding, you know, where there's this young girl that has a health issue, and a piece of that is, you know, aggressive behaviors that if she goes to jail, she's going to re-offend in jail. All I could see was that unfolding, and that really, really frightened me. She's not a killer. You know, she's not out robbing liquor stores or banks. She's not a child molester. We are yet again calling on our federal justice minister to jointly meet with the families of others in the same situation. We are desperate for your intervention. <laughs> My mother did a lot of the work, which I appreciate. Again, thanks, Mom. <laughs> One teaspoon. Yep, you got it. She's like my hero in a way. I came from living, I'm living in a nightmare to heaven. I can't be running away from my problems. I have to face it head on. So that made me want to come back. He told me he wanted to come back to Nova Scotia so he could fight his case. He didn't want to run. He wanted to stick it out and he wanted his life back. So Landon, we're basically finished the last draft of this affidavit. All of your points made now to challenge the legislation. Remember that this is the evidence. The uh, matters before the court uh, include determination whether the Incompetent Persons Act is uh, constitutional uh, or not. We're also hoping that the, um, the courts will review his uh, need for a guardianship order in, at, at all. just means basically that I'm just going in the right direction and it's another step. It means a lot to prove to people that I can do it on my own. I've laid up a lot of nights thinking about it, what I could have done better. It's almost like sometimes you're living on a chessboard and you wonder, should you have done this first, done that, secondly, thirdly? If I was to do it all over again, I'd do it all over again. Yep. I think independent living with supports would be good. That would give him the option to uh, be around his kids and be able to be with them every day and raise them and be with his family. Daddy hug? I really want to work a Monday to Friday job. Just living like anybody else. Coming home to my girlfriend Tiffany and the kids and spending time with the kids. Bullet. Put them to bed and watch a movie with Tiffany at night. And just doing anything else <laughs> that any other normal family does. 
and I, I think I deserve that. Hey. 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 Hey.